Hello, it's Gabby here for you. Before we jump onto this week's podcast, I just want to let you know about two ways that you can work with me. First of all, I do one-to-one coaching and I do that via Zoom so we can jump on a Zoom call at a time to suit you. The second thing I've got for you is an online coaching course that's 12 modules that you can download straight away now. There will be a link somewhere around these podcast notes. And this is the course that I've designed and it's got everything in it that I wish I'd have known when I finished cancer treatment and I was lost. So you can download that course now and you can start working towards making this your happiest and healthiest year ever. I'd love to hear from you. Let me know what you think. Take care. Bye bye. Hi, it's Gabby here for you from Confidence After Cancer and I hope this finds you well. This week, I want to talk about a topic that comes up um, quite often when I'm talking to clients that I'm working with or just people in general, people around my age particularly, um, struggle with this topic a lot and that is brain fog. And as always, I'm going to say that the advice I'm going to give you is not a substitute for medical advice. I think if you've got any serious medical um, conditions, you should always contact your GP or your doctor first. But I've got a lot of tips here that that have helped me and that have helped people that I'm working with um, overcoming um, brain fog or chemo brain, as it's quite often known. After cancer treatment, um, quite a common side effect is chemo brain, as it's known, Um, kind of jokingly, but it can be quite distressing for a lot of people. And that's for people who've been through chemotherapy who find it very difficult to focus on anything and really get quite distressed about their brain fog or their muddled thinking. It's also sometimes known as, um, you know, senior moments. It can be, again, can be jokingly referred to that. And that's okay if you're feeling okay about it. But if you're not feeling particularly strong in the moment, that can be quite distressing if somebody refers to you as having a senior moment. And I know in my life as well, there's been times, sometimes I think it is related to hormones. And I recently saw on Instagram, um, Jasmine Harmon, who is from um, A Place in the Sun, one of my favourite programmes, bless. And she was talking about her menopause and she, one of her um, side effects in her menopause journey was she just couldn't remember anything. And she was getting really, really distressed about her muddled thinking not being able to retain facts and information. And that's quite important in her job, you know, as a TV presenter. Um, But for her, her story was she went to a specialist in menopause and was put on HRT treatment. And straight away, she said she could tell the difference. Straight away, the day after she started her HRT, she felt the difference and she knew in her her thinking and her, her brain power if you like and her memory um it was just all hormonal that's for her was quite an easy fix and um, eventually after she found the right person who could prescribe the right level of hrt for her so i'm going to talk about you know for cancer survivors, chemo brain or sometimes uh, any of these things, muddle thinking, brain fog can be quite a distressing side effect of the treatment that you've been through, but also about the um, basically the trauma that you've been through as well. It's not always related to, to the treatment that you've had. It can be related to the trauma that you've been through, the shock of your diagnosis and the changes in your life that you may have had to make. Um, So I've got six tips, really. And again, this is not a substitute for medical advice, but it's things that have worked for me, things that have worked for people that I know. So I'm hoping they're helpful for you as well. And the first tip I would give you, and I know I tell you this a lot, is to make sure that you're getting enough sleep. Because if we are tired, if we're distressed, you know, if we're not getting enough sleep, it's very, very difficult difficult for your brain to be on track to keep on top of things and it's quite you know you understand yourself when you're really really tired um how difficult it is to to keep on top of things and to have clear thinking and to be able to make the right decisions but sometimes we get in the habit of thinking well I don't need a lot of sleep or I'm just used to that or I hear people say well I never sleep very well it's just the way that I am and they can go on for a long period of time without getting that wonderful restorative sleep that we all need. When we are sleeping, you know, our body is uh, repairing and restoring itself. We all need that sleep. And that's quite, you know, if that's a huge problem for you, that's a separate subject. But for most people, it could be just a bit of thinking about your sleep and maybe getting yourself a few early nights, getting yourself into a nice routine of calming down at night and just making sure you're getting to sleep. 
And also the other thing that's linked to that quite often is exercise. And I know myself, if I make the effort to get up in the morning, go and do some exercise, and it can be simple as a 10 minute walk to my local park. It doesn't have to be anything too uh, vigorous or too overstretching. But I know if I've done that exercise every morning, I do sleep better and I know I feel better about myself. I feel more positive and I'm less likely to get distressed by brain fog or not being able to remember things. The next tip I would give you is always to deal with any worries that you've got. And I know in my past, my um, brain fog and my chemo brain or whatever you want to call it, my senior moments were made a lot worse by being under stress. And at one point I did actually visit my GP because I was getting really, really worried about my memory and about not being able to um, remember things. And he actually said to me, he did a memory test. And at the end of it, he said, there's nothing wrong with your memory. He said, but are you under a lot of stress? And at the time, I was going through a very stressful period in my life. And it kind of made sense. And it kind of gave me permission to be kind to myself and think, OK, this this will pass. This is not how I'm going to be forever. Because it's quite easy to get into that negative spiral of thinking, well, this is it now. I'm senior. You know, I'm 60. I'm never going to be re- able to remember things again. But it wasn't. It helped me just speaking to my doctor helped me didn't do anything you just told me there's nothing wrong with you there's nothing wrong with your memory but I would always advise you if you are getting distressed like I was or you're getting worried go and speak to your doctor um the other thing that I would say to you that really helps me is to declutter make your life simpler you know I've talked before and I will probably do a, a podcast episode all about the benefits of decluttering making your life simpler the more stuff you have the more effort it is to look after that stuff, to store it, to clean it, to look after it. And I know myself, it can be just something as simple as just clearing out one drawer, organising a drawer um, makes me feel better. Um, Or just cleaning something. And again, you don't have to tackle your whole house uh, all at once if you're feeling overwhelmed. Just do one thing for yourself. And it is kindness. And it's almost like a bit of mindfulness for me. Cleaning out a drawer, making it smell nice, maybe using some essential oils, putting things back and having things in order always helps me to feel more in control and makes me clearer in my thinking. That really helps me. One of the ladies that I listen to is a wonderful lady called um, Denise Duffield Thomas. And I've read her books, but I I like to listen to her on Audible as well. And she talks about when she had baby brain really badly. And she had two small children, I think. And twice, I think she locked herself out of her house. And she was like, I can't go on like this. She was a busy woman. She was running a business. She had in the house she had children her husband to look after she had a lot going on and she just thought I can't cope with this losing my keys and she took what I thought was quite a drastic step and she um got a keypad put into her house so she has no keys anymore so no keys to lose she just has a keypad and I'd ask you to think about is there something in your life that you can think well actually I'm always doing this thing can I do something to make it better and for me um I'll tell you an example I've got um, a few years ago, I was diagnosed with short sightedness. So I went to my optician and he said, you need reading glasses. And I've been struggling for quite a long time to read things close up. And I got these reading glasses and spectacles, you know, they were quite expensive and had these glasses and I was forever putting them down. And then I couldn't remember where I put my glasses. Um, I was getting a little bit stressed about this. And then I realised I went on Amazon and I realised I could buy five pairs of reading glasses for something like £10, something really cheap. And so I bought five pairs and now I have a pair in my handbag. I have a pair of reading glasses in my car. I have a pair of reading glasses in my nightstand next to my bed. So if I'm reading in bed, I can put my glasses on. So I just have these little cheap glasses all over the place. And that, for me, does away with the stress of thinking, oh my goodness, I need to read something. I can't read this small print. Where are my glasses? So again, just think about the things that stress you out, things that get in the way of you and and cause you stress and cause you dis- distress when you can't remember things are there things that you could do like that that would help you okay little memory joggers and the last thing I would give you the top tip I would give you is just to be kind to yourself I'm always saying this because it's such good advice and so many people need this advice just to be kind to yourself just remember you can say no to things that you don't want to do and quite often people I'm speaking to particularly women think that they've got obligations that they can't get out of think that they've just got a busy life they've got too much going on but actually I can't really say no to that I couldn't say no to that person or my boss wants me to do this thing and I'm always the person who volunteers but actually before the next time when somebody asks you to do something just take a breath 
take a pause and think, do I really want to do this? And if you don't want to do it, don't do it. That would be my top tip. So stop overwhelming yourself. You know, you do have choices. Quite often we go along in life thinking, well, I haven't really got a choice. I've got to do this thing. I've got to see that person. I've got that obligation that I need to make. But we do it until sometimes we get so many obligations and so many things that we have to do that our brains just shut down. And there's only a you know certain amount of things that your brain can remember and cope with and enjoy. And I'm all about having a long and happy and healthy life. And, you know, life is here to be enjoyed. It's not supposed to be an ordeal. So if you are struggling with chemo brain or baby brain or brain fog, whatever it is, muddle thinking, reach out to somebody, talk to me if you want to, book a call with me. I'm quite happy to talk about the challenges that you've got, maybe gives you some suggestions of things that you might want to think about. This, what I've given you today is just a 10 minute, very general advice. I'm well aware of that. Um, but if I talk to you one to one, we can go more in depth into what's going on for you. As I say, it's not a substitution for medical advice that, you know, I'm not a doctor, I'm not claiming to be. But I've worked with a lot of people who've just made some really simple shifts in their lives just to make their lives happier and healthier. And I'd love to reach out to you if that applies to you. So as always, I'd urge you to have a wonderful week. Stay safe and stay sane. And I'll speak to you very soon, my darling. Take care. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.